Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Hello and welcome to a new lesson my dear and esteemed students Lesson number 10 And the title of this lesson is Submarines and Airships I hope you will be interesting with me all the lesson Look at the two photos my students what can you see in the first one and what can you see the in the second one yes here besides every photos we have the name of this object or thing in the first photo we can see an airship and in the second one we can see a hot air balloon yes all right work in pairs and discuss what you know about the aircraft above then match the start of the sentences one two and three to the ends a b c to complete the definitions here we have three words an aircraft an airship and a hot air balloon we will, and we want to complete their definitions by completing by matching with the other column yes so the first one an aircraft is anything that flies anything that flies we can match it with number b the second sentence an airship is a powered lighter than aircraft a powered yes it's supplied by a pa by an engine for example hmm? powered lighter than aircraft number three a hot air balloon is a lighter than aircraft that follows the direction of the wind so the th third one a hot air balloon isn't a powered isn't a powered object let's see the answers number one with b number two with the second the first one a and finally number three with c Number A in our work books work in pairs and discuss these questions so here's this question number A is from our work book what is the difference number one what is the difference between an airship and a hot air balloon we have seen earlier the photos of an airship and a hot air balloon and now we want to discuss we want to explain the main difference between an air balloon a hot air balloon and an airship so what is the main difference my students could you know can you guess the answer yeah Balloons follow the direction of the wind So balloons follow the direction of the wind while airships are powered and ha have some sometimes or have controlling their direction usually with rudders I will repeat that answer balloons follow the direction of the wind so they don't have radars they don't have anything to direct their direction whereas airships are powered and have some means some tools of controlling their direction usually they direct their directions using using radars radars 
Number two, which has a lower density, air or helium? Which gas here has a lower density, air or helium? Sure, helium has very low density. Sure, here we are talking about helium and air. Helium has a very low density. Number three, why is helium used in airships? Why is helium used in airships? Because it's a lifting gas. And at the same time, it's lighter than air. So, using this gas, helium, you can raise up in the air. Number four, what other gases could be used in airships? We can use hydrogen and hot air besides the helium gas. After answering these four questions, you can see the answers and you can check them with yours. So this is uh, the first one is recap is conclude of what was said before helium has very low density so helium is lighter than air number three because it's lifting gas it's lighter than air and finally we have other gases like, like hydrogen and hot air Number C, Archimedes or Archimedes principle in lesson 9 explained why boats float on water. It can also explain why airships fly. Work in pairs, look at the diagrams of the airships. Students each explain how an airship goes up and the students B explain how an airship goes down. Here, if you want to answer, we have to depend on the Archimedes principle. Here, I have written some possible answers like number one, in order for the balloon to go up, in order for any aircraft to go up in the air, Air is pushed out of the airship. Because helium is lighter than air, the airship becomes lighter and rises. I will repeat it again. In, air, in order for the balloon to go up, if we want to raise the level of any airship, air is pushed out of the airship. Because helium is lighter than air so the airship becomes lighter and rises number two in order to go down air is sucked in air is sucked in and as you all know air is heavier than helium so the balloon becomes heavier and so it goes down and them. Now, number D, look at the diagrams and read. Read the text below about submarines, then answer these questions. So, first of all, we want to read about submarines. Submarines are ships which can float and also sink. They have they have a cigar shaped hulls and a conning, uh, a conning tower on top. They are able to travel to the depths of the ocean as well as sailing on the surface. Because of this, the hull must be strong enough to withstand great pressure. 
Submarines are able to float and sink because they contain large ballast tanks. Pumps on the submarine add just the amount of air or water in the tanks. When the submarine floats, the ballast tanks are full of air. So here, <coughs> the principle of floating and sinking is the same as in airships. The same principle. Let's come back to our exercise number D. Look at the diagrams. We have looked at them and read the text. After reading, we can so that, uh, we can do the texts or the tasks about the submarines. Then answer these questions. Yes, number one. Which part of the submarine enables it to float and sink? Here we want to know which part of this submarine or that submarine is responsible for floating and sinking and what controls the amount of air what things which controls the amount of air here you can see the answers so here the ballast tanks enables the submarine to float and sink the part in submarine which is responsible for sinking and floating is the ballast tanks the ballast tanks number two what controls the amount of air the pump the pump controls the amount of air which goes in and goes out of them number b in the workbook in our big workbook look again at the diagrams in exercise number D on your course book page number 27 then write two paragraphs answering these questions we want to answer these questions and we put our uh, uh, answers in a model of paragraph number one what happens when a submarine sinks and what happens when a submarine rises here we want to describe what things what things which are happening and while sinking and while rising while getting down and up here we have model answers in order in order to sink Air is pumped out of the ballast tanks and water is let in from the sea. As the submarine becomes heavier, it sinks. The same principle of the airships. So in order in order to sink, air is pumped out of the ballast tanks and water is in is lit in from the sea as the submarine becomes then the submarine becomes heavier and finally eventually it sinks number two if we want to rise the submarine in a submarine yes to rise it to rise again air is forced into the ballast tanks by the pumps at the same time water is pushed out water is let out so the submarine becomes lighter and it rises this is the principle of rising and sinking number C Rewrite the two sentences as one sentence. We want to gather here two sentences and make them just one is using so and that. Here we have a model, an example. The iceberg was very close. The Titanic's captain couldn't avoid it. 
we can reform this two, these two sentences to make them just one like the iceberg was so close that the titanic's captain couldn't avoid it the iceberg was so close that the titanic's captain couldn't avoid it let's do the other sentences number one the density of helium is low helium is used in air ships number two the titanic was large people thought that it couldn't sink three submarines have thick hulls they can travel to the bottom of oceans number four Icebergs are dangerous for shipping. There are patrols to, war to warn ships about them. And finally we have number five. Airships are slow. They are used very little for passengers, passenger traffic. Here we use, we will use so and that to link between two sentences. Yes. Now I will let you think I will give you just a minute to think, my dear students, how can we link between these sentences and then I will show you the answers. I am sure you have done the first, second, third, fourth and fifth one. So here are the answers. Number one, the density of helium is so low. Here, what can we do? What do we do? We put so before the adjective low and then we put that after the adjective. So here, the adjective low is in the middle. It is preceded by so and it is followed by that the whole sentence becomes the density of helium is so low that it's used in airships the same thing can be applied on the other sentences number two the titanic was so large that People thought it couldn't sink. Number three, the hulls of submarines are so thick that they can travel to the bottom of the oceans. The hulls of submarines are so thick that they can travel to the bottom of the oceans. Number four, icebergs are so dangerous to shipping that there are patrols to warn ships about them. And finally, number five, airships are so slow that they are used very little for passenger traffic. After doing, after concluding this exercise, exercise number C, in our workbook, I want to say you all my esteemed students goodbye and see you later in the following lesson prepare for it very much thank you again and goodbye